Let's welcome in our co-hosts. He's known as the Admiral Bill Stubblefield. Billy, good morning to you. Good morning, Rob. Great to be here. New York Times best-selling author John Gilstrap. Good morning, Johnny. Good morning. Yesterday when we had you, Jeffrey Deaver in the studio, and uh, and me, between the three of us, we've sold like 80 million books. <laughs> I've contributed none of those sales uh, to that, by the way, but uh, I can say that between the three of us, we really have sold a lot of books. Congratulations, Rob. Thank you. I, I, <laughs> speaking on Jeff's behalf, uh, we, we really appreciate it. Uh, but I would tell you, apparently, Bill listened to the praise you lavished on Matt Harvey yesterday for his sartorial uh, uh, appearance, and, and, you, and you came with the power yellow tie. Well, <laughs> I'll show you my tie after. I'm <laughs> it, it's a there, clip on, John. There, no, no, there's a story behind the tie. Okay. <laughs> Yes, that's for wiping his mouth after lunch. <laughs> yeah, the uh, tell them we got a busy first half hour here, and then the Friday Five crew will join us after the uh, halftime break. Uh, but uh, Chris Miller is in Martinsburg, a candidate for governor this weekend, and uh, he is going to join us live in the studio in about 10 or 15 minutes. Senator Patricia Rucker is joining us by phone right now before the Senate caucuses at 8.30. Good morning, Senator Rucker. Great to have you with us. Thank you. Good morning. Hey, uh, I, every time I go through uh, Harper's Ferry on 340, I think of you. And this was, a, a, I know they were working on the bridge this week, which is a, another issue there. But uh, every time I drive through there, I, I think of your traffic reports for us while that was going on. Thank you very much, by the way. <laughs> no problem. And, you know, we're not done. Although um, I like to think that we'll at least get a little bit of a break before the next uh, interruption. Yeah, and by, and by the way, if this politics thing doesn't work out for you, think about a career as a traffic reporter. Okay. <laughs> you know, put that on the uh, on the schedule there. Uh, let's talk sure. about uh, the Senate now because things are beginning to move a little faster as uh, this uh, legislative process continues along. Now you're in the, the second half of uh, the legislative session. Uh, what are you close to getting uh, passed personally, Patricia, in this session? Oh, boy. What am I close to getting passed? Okay. <laughs> well, several um, of my pieces of legislation have made it past the Senate and are now in the possession of the House. Um, some of the things you may remember, like the uh, fence of human smuggling, uh, something that we have tried to pass for a couple of years. We once again have passed out the Senate. It is now up to the House to decide if they're going to pass. My adding a definition of ammunition for purposes of the con- Carry concealed, um, you know, courses that folks need to take. Um, again, not super big. Just don't know why it didn't pass last year. The funding of adult education um, centers also is in the house. Um, requiring the county school board meetings to be open to the public and broadcast live on the uh, online also is back in the house's hands. Um, you know, lots of these things that um, are requests from the folks in the Eastern Panhandle, and, you know, I've, I've been working on getting it through, the um, making a felony offense of reckless driving resulting in death, which you may remember the yes. very tragic case here um, we've had in the Eastern Panhandle, and again, second time, I've passed it out of the Senate, and let's see the House will pass it. What's the hang-up on that one, Senator Rucker? Because that seems like a layup to me in terms of getting that passed. Yeah, you would think. I really, again, don't know why we've had difficulty getting it out of the House Judiciary. Um, I mean, I will, in all fairness, I haven't had a direct conversation with um, the Judiciary Chair from the past, more capital. Um, he never told me what the problem was. It is possible that there's just so many bills, you can only get to so many. So this year, all of those bills that I mentioned that I've passed in the past, we got through very early in the session. So it has been in possession of the Judiciary Chair in the House since, like, January 15th or 16th. And I can only hope that you know, he will consider them maybe uh, first when he starts doing House bills. The new Judiciary Chair I have a very good relationship with, uh, Delegate Tom Fass, and I, he has promised me to have a conversation with me about all these bills. So, What would, the, what would the penalty be if your bill passes it? Let's say uh, I'm out drag racing with a friend of mine and uh, you know, we are, we're going 90 miles an hour in a 40 zone and I pass a school bus and, and, and I kill a kid. 
Uh, what what uh, right now? That's not a felony for some odd reason in the state. What would the yeah. new, what would the new felony law make it? Well, I have to look up the exact because, of course, I haven't seen it in a little bit. But um, it it is making it a felony felony offense, and I don't think it is um, obviously going to have as much jail time as if you did it purposely, because you know this is just you were negligent. But um, but yeah, to me, like like you said, it is kind of like just common sense that if you were negligent or reckless you you and you killed someone because of it there needs to be jail time so i'm looking at it right now it looks like um 10 not less than one year no more than 10 years and of course there's fine um of not less than five thousand or more than ten thousand and you can be imprisoned and fined bill uh, good morning, Senator. Uh, you mentioned uh, you submitted an amendment to define ammunition. What do you mean by that? Oh, okay. Um, so that's a very simple bill. Um, in our concealed carry classes that we make folks take in order to get a concealed carry license, it wasn't clear um, that you don't have to use, like, actual bullets. You can use this um other type of ammunition that is not an actual bullet, but it still is a projectile. So um, as you know, when you take that class, you have to be able to shoot so many and, and so much um, time within a small area. And sometimes it takes folks a very long time. And so by giving them the flexibility of not having to use like the actual bullets, it, you know, it's not quite an, such an expensive um, expenditure for them. Having said that, this was just a clarification that you could do that. Most of the counties in the entire state understood this and didn't have any problems. Um, as long as it was practicing with a projectile, you're getting the same effect. But um, unfortunately, locally, it, it wasn't quite as clear. And so we've been trying to pass this to make certain that the folks who offer courses in the Eastern Panhandle can have that flexibility. Yeah, if, Senator, good morning. This is John Gilstrap. If I can clarify what this allows, this takes this would take, and I presume, so that the, the firearm uh, demonstration or the firearm practice can be done in a classroom environment. You don't have to go to a gun range to get it done. It's still about uh, drawing and pointing and shooting and, and making sure that the projectile gets on the target. You just don't have to go to a, out to a shooting range somewhere with real ammunition. It sure would make it a little bit easier, that's for sure. You mentioned funding adult education centers. Are we talking yeah. about CTCs or exactly what are we talking about? No, the adult education learning centers are, so um, they're part of the Board of Education, part of our educational system. We have adult education to help um, students get their GED. Uh, they also do a whole bunch more. So they provide certification courses. They help with workforce skills. They will help you with your resumes and your interview. Um, they'll, help, they'll help you practice and prepare for interviews. The adult education learning centers are just amazing. And with very, very inconsistent funding, you wouldn't believe how much they do. I know the Jefferson County Adult Education Center right now currently is looking for a place that anyone knows of um, room where they could move in. They lost their um, steady place at, with that fire that occurred this past summer. Mm -hmm. And they're currently just at the corner connections, leasing like a couple rooms there. So if anyone knows of available space. But one of the issues that I learned about is they don't have steady funding, none of the adult education uh, centers in the state. It is discretionary funding that um, some come from the Board of Education, some come from local boards, some come from the county commissions. It, it's just kind of hit or miss. Many of them apply for grants. But without having a steady funding source, they never know from year to year how much money they're going to have, how much staff they can retain. And it just seems um, crazy that we're asking them to do so much, and they do such a great job, but they just don't have that reliable funding source. So I have a bill to just create that discussion of what would be the best way to ensure a 
steady and reliable funding source for our adult education learning centers. Senator Rucker, I want to thank you very much for your time this morning and uh, bringing you back on Tuesday, I think it is, next week uh, also for a, a longer segment. I appreciate your time this morning. I know you've got to get to the caucus at 8.30 and, and whatever, but uh, I wish you a great day. Thank you. You guys, too. Have a great day.